Today, I'm going to show you how to make a custom background in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is super cool, because I'm going to show you some things that you might have never seen before in Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to basically make a selection and cut our subject out of the background. Now, that's going to be fun, but that's not the cool part. The cool part is we're going to be using custom shapes to define a new background. We're going to show you guys how to make, like, you know, stripes or horizontal plaid. We're even going to show you how to make a custom pattern in Photoshop and then how to fill the background with that pattern. It's going to be a super cool episode. It's not going to take a long time and we're going to get great results. All right, so here's our image for today. We've got a picture of my twin brother. Can you see the resemblance? <laughs> Let's go ahead and show you guys how to cut him out of his backdrop. This is the easiest way to do it. Now, I chose an image that's on a white backdrop to make my job a little bit easier. And if you guys are going to photograph people with the expectation of cutting them out, Photograph them on a solid color background, just like this. OK, now the easiest tool to use here is the magic wand tool. Don't shy away from it. It's a really powerful tool. We're just going to click on our magic wand tool. And I'm going to bring my tolerance to right to about 40. That's going to include quite a bit, so I don't have to click a bunch of times. Now, basically, I just need to click right here on my background. And you can see it makes a selection around most of my background. You can see everything. It's going to stop at the shadow and the hair and things like that. So not a big deal. We can actually add to this selection uh, by holding down the Shift key. So if I hold down Shift, you're going to see a little plus next to my magic wand. So I'm, now I'm going to click inside of the shadow. Oh, you know what? That included a little bit too much. If that ever happens, not a big deal. Just hit Command Z to hit Undo, and then try changing your tolerance down to a lower number. So I'm going to try 30. Now let's hit Shift and click there. And there we can see it didn't include part of his face. Perfect. Let's just Shift click that area as well. Looking good. Let's go ahead over here and make sure we've, we've got our shadow included in our selection as well. OK, so now it's a good idea to scroll around your subject just to make sure you've got a nice selection right around your subject. Don't worry about the hair. We're going to take care of that separately. All right, there we go. So our subject is nicely outlined. OK, so we're ready for our hair. And this is a super cool trick that you can use. Basically, you cut out any kind of, if you're cutting things out with a soft edge, like hair or clouds or something like that, we're going to use the Refine Edge tool. So if you're already on your Magic Wand tool, you can just click on this Refine Edge button here at the top. Or you can go to Select and down to Refine Edge. It'll always be there. OK, now my suggestion on how to use the tool, you can have a couple different options here on what view you'd like. You can view it on white. You can view it on black. You can view on layers or reveal layers. I like this on layers button because you can kind of see what's going on. Um, you know what, in this case, let's do overlay so I can see. I, I'd like to get a good idea of what I'm actually doing. So there we go. This doesn't change what's actually going on in your selection. It's just a different way of viewing your selection. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here on my Refine Edge tool. And basically, let's just make our brush a little bit bigger here. And we're going to paint right around the hair. So starting over here on the left, we're going to go up right over the top of the hair. And what Photoshop is going to do, this is totally brilliant. Kudos on Adobe for figuring this out. Um, it's going to figure out what is similar to my original selection. And um, it's going to basically refine the edge for me. So I'm going to let go. And you can see now instead of having everything selected, it's just the hair that gets selected. It pretty much did a hair selection for me, which is amazing. Let's hit OK. And there we can see there's the before, where it's just a Let's zoom in here so you can see. So you can see it's just this dotted line right there on the edge line of the hair. And the after, it's actually selecting inside of the hair, which is very cool. OK, so now that we have our selection, we're ready for a custom background on our photo. Super cool. What we're going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And then I'm going to group that layer with itself, because we're going to use this selection to create a layer mask. Now, oftentimes, you don't need a layer mask to be just on one layer. It's a really good idea to put that layer mask onto a group, and then you can put whatever you want inside of that group, and that makes the layer mask work for all those layers. I'll show you what I mean. So we've got our group. Let's go ahead and click on our layer mask button, which is right here. It's a square with a circle inside of it. There we go. And here we can see we've got white where our subject is not, and black where our subject exists. So this layer is inside of that layer mask. Let's just grab a brush tool. I'm going to paint red so you guys get a good idea of what this is going to do. So I can paint red outside there. But as I go where my subject is, even over the hair, you see that? Because we made that really nice selection. 
That's really cool. It's not going to show up where my subject is. So this layer doesn't have a layer mask of its own, but it's inside of this group that does. OK, so that's really helpful, right? Now we can just kind of create a bunch of layers inside of here, and they're all going to have the same layer mask. OK, first thing I want to show you guys, and this is super cool. We're going to show you guys how to use what's called a step and repeat to make a repeating pattern here in Photoshop. All right, we're going to zoom out. And with I'm just going to grab a regular marquee tool, so a rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to make a thin stripe here on the top. There we go. And I'm going to hit Shift Delete. We'll just fill this now with black and hit OK. So we filled that with black. Let's deselect by hitting Command D. And we can see I can, I can move this up and down. It's not going to show up where my subject is. Let's start it right about there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to repeat this over and over and over again in the image. Super cool. So let's bring it up to the top. First, I want to turn this into a selection. So to turn any layer into a selection, just hold the Control or the Command key and click on the thumbnail. So Control or Command, click on that thumbnail. You can see it's turned into a selection. OK, now it's time to do what is known as the step. This is the first part here. So it's a step and repeat. So this is the step, then we're going to do the repeat. OK, the step, you want to hold down Option, Command, and T. If you guys are on a uh, PC, it's going to be Alt and Control and T. All right, so Option, Command, T. That's our step. So that starts a transformation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down. There we go. Right to about there and hit Enter. OK, so, so far, basically, I just duplicated and moved it down. That's called the step. Now the repeat is going to do the same exact thing over and over and over again, which is really where it comes cool. OK, so to get to that, all I have to do now is just hold down Shift, Option, and Command, and hit T. So the first one was Option, Command, T. This is Shift, Option, Command, T. So just hold down the Shift key as well. Shift, Option, Command, T. And each time I hit T, it's going to do the exact same thing over and over and over again on my image. So it's just creating another one of these, and it's spacing it equally apart as the last one, which is very, very cool. Now, let's say I want this to actually blend in with my image a little bit. I'm going to lower my opacity. Let's hit uh, V and then the number 5 to go to 50%. 50, 50 we're going to change our layer blend mode for here from normal down to multiply that if you had something that like you wanted to appear over top of shadow, which in this case we do, right? We want this to look like it's over top of the shadow, then it's perfect. We have exactly what we want. We've created a new background for our subject. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's take it up a notch. I feel like Emeril Lagasse is saying that. <laughs> I'm going to duplicate this layer. We'll hit, let's hit Command J to duplicate that. And I can move this layer around. We've got whatever we want. Let's go ahead and just move it. I'm going to hit Command T to transform. And we're just going to rotate this horizontally. There we go. And now we have something like a, uh, a plaid surface. Let's hit uh, Command J on that and just duplicate it again. There we go. Well, it's overlapping a little bit, but you get the idea. This guy's like, I don't care if it overlaps. No one's going to be looking at the background anyway when you've got a beautiful man like me to look at. Um, I'm sure that's how he talks. Anyway, <laughs> so you can see it basically follows the same rules. That everything I put inside of this group is going to show up as a custom background for our subject. Let's just try stretching one of these out. Let's hit Command T. I'm going to click on the chain link here between the width and the height. There we go. And I'm going to just crank up the width. There we go. So basically, the width and the height are moving together. And now just the width is moving together. So I can make this you know, super fine if I want to, or I can make this thicker and thicker and thicker. So you'll get a good idea of like what you actually want. And these things you can use to make your image just a little bit more interesting. If I wanted to fill this with a solid color, I could do that as well. I'll go to a solid color fill layer. Let's choose the blue that's in a shirt, and then just come down to like a nice dark version. Let's hit OK there. And then we'll just lower the opacity a little bit. There we go. And then you have like a SNL type image, right? Saturday Night Live with someone cut out of the background. So you can use this to put other colors behind your subject as well. Now there's one more thing that I want to teach you, and that's involving patterns. Patterns can offer a lot of options as well. So I pulled this off a stock image website. Basically, I just have one variation of this pattern. And what I'd like to do is turn it into what's called a custom pattern here in Photoshop. So Basically, you just want to make sure that your pattern is dark on a light backdrop, and that's going to turn it. That's going to allow you to turn it into a pattern. So this looks great. I'm going to go to, to Edit, and then we're going to go down to Define Pattern. Now this is going to place this as a pattern in Photoshop. So Pattern One looks good to me. We'll hit OK, and then nothing is done until we figure out how to use this. So let's switch back to our other image here. I'm going to create a new layer, and now I'm going to show you guys how to fill 
a layer with patterns. Very, very cool. So on a new layer, I'm just going to hold down Shift and hit the Delete key. So we've defined our pattern. Remember, we just defined that pattern. And now we can say, you know, when you have your fill, fill dialog, use black or gray or white. But we also have this option for patterns. OK, and we just made a pattern, right? So now if I want to fill with a pattern, it's super easy. I just go to where it says Custom Pattern. And the one I just made shows up right here, because this is where my patterns, when I made my pattern, this is where it goes, in the Custom Patterns. So we can click there. And now we have a bunch of other cool options. So let's just hit OK and see what this does. All right, it fills the entire image with that pattern. So you don't have to mess around with the step and repeat and things like that. Now let's try another option here. We're going to fill pattern. We're going to use that custom pattern. I'm going to click on this scripted pattern. And now we have a bunch of different options, things like a spiral. It's actually going to take this pattern here and fill it instead of just you know in a block form, it's actually going to spiral it right around. And you have options as far as like you know color randomness. So you can see you can add some color in there. Uh, you can even add brightness random brightness, randomness, and pattern spacing, and things like that. Let's go ahead and bring that a little farther down. That, that's kind of cool. There we go. So we can change our pattern scale. Let's bring that up a little bit. There we go. Let's hit OK and see how that looks. Obviously, you want to play with those uh, settings to get something you actually like, but that's pretty cool. So we defined a pattern, and now it's randomly spiraling out from the center of our image. And it's behind our subject. Just change this layer from a normal blend mode down to a multiply blend mode and check that out. It's going to try to darken everything. It can't darken the shadows, so you're, you're able to see the shadows through the pattern. Let's do one more just to see how this works. So pattern, we're going to use the pattern that we defined. And now we're just going to try with a random fill. And it's just going to create a total random hodgepodge of these guys. All right, let's uh, bring our color randomness down and our brightness randomness. Brightness randomness. There we go. And you could do like, if you had a, a couple patterns that you made of like playing cards, you could make it look like someone was on a deck of playing cards or something like that. So a bunch of different cool ways to make a custom background in Photoshop. All right, guys, thanks for watching today's episode. I hope you learned a bunch. We learned how to cut our subject out and then how to use the Refine Edge tool to make sure we cut out his hair correctly. Then we showed you how to use that selection as a layer mask on a group. And then I showed you how to use the Step and Repeat tool to create basically stripes that would just repeat over and over and over again. And then we showed you how to take a custom pattern, define it, and then use it in a fill dialog to create custom pattern backgrounds. So cool. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. It's really awesome that you're here hanging out with me, learning some Photoshop. If you like what we're teaching here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can receive free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea or a question about today's episode, just leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again, guys. Share Flurn with your friends, because that's what cool people do. I'll Flurn you later. Bye, everyone. I would know I'm a cool person, and I share Flurn with all of my friends. Every one of them knows about it. All right. You can use pattern. All right. So earlier we used stripes. So earlier we used basically. Patterns are really cool. Um, patterns are super cool. Old school flower pattern, whatever. <laughs> Fleur pattern. Uh, I don't know how to say this. I'm a part time model. Um, patterns are super cool.